Hello. So Dorothy was nice enough to do the entire rule on 202.33. It's really long. It's about voir dires. So I am going to post that video as soon as I'm done editing it, but I wanted to just go over what I think you have to memorize for it because it's very long and I understand if you're not going to read it. So what I want you to memorize is that there's three acceptable methods that are listed as far as voir dire processes. There's White's method, Shuck's method, and the strike and replace method. White's method, Shuck's method, and the strike and replace method. Strike and replace is only allowed where the fucking chief administrator says it's allowed. And also you can have another method that the fucking chief administrator approves. The next thing is that when you're doing Shuck's method, it's 25 prospective jurors to start. So 25 to start. The regular CPLR, it says for a civil jury, it's one or more alternates. So you'd have six jurors and one or more alternates. Now, but when you get to the rule in 202.33, it's unless the court orders otherwise, you're going to pick eight jurors. So there's, um, there's like a little discrepancy there. So it, it's like two alternates with the general, general practice according to the civil rules. But the CPLR clearly says one or more. The other thing I want you to memorize is that there's something in the rules that talks about non-designated alternates. So normally you'll have your six regular jurors and then you'll have two alternates. When you do non-designated alternates, you're just going to take your three challenges for the regulars and your one challenge for the two alternates and you're going to get four peremptory challenges. Each side is going to get four peremptory challenges. So each side is going to get four peremptory challenges and the jurors will not be designated alternates or regulars. It's just non-designated alternates. The other thing to note about this article is that there's a bunch of shalls in it. So you have to know the shalls. There's a, the trial judge shall select the method. Select the method of jury, jury selection. The trial judge shall preside at the opening of the jury selection. All right, so there's a couple of shalls you gotta know about there. So the trial judge shall preside and open at the commencement of the voir dire proceeding, but then it's in their discretion whether or not to continue unless one side makes an application that the trial judge supervised, then, some, then he has to. But if nobody asks, it's their discretion. No one asks, it's the trial judge's discretion whether or not to continue being present during the selection of jurors. So questioning of prospective jurors, the court has shall impose limits of time on question, questioning of the prospective jurors. And as far as the questioning itself goes, the plaintiff goes first and then the other parties go in the order that their names appear in the caption, in the order that their names appear in the caption. So if there's three plaintiffs, I guess, like me, Angela, Dorothy are all suing Leah Sophia. We... I will go first because I'm like the lead plaintiff and then Dorothy's name is next and she goes second and that's how they do it. It's the order that we are named in the caption that determines the order of questioning. The clerk, so if there's for some reason involved in this, the only function that they have that is like made mention of the clerk at any part in this rule that I got through was that if there's any special assistance anticipated, like an interpreter or something, Counsel shall inform the clerk. And if there's an issue, counsel shall argue and make their selections outside of the jury's presence, which makes sense. I do not think that they are going to expect you to memorize actually what White's method, Shuck's method, or striker in place method is. Um, I don't think that they're going to get that in depth with it. I think you're going to have to know what those three things are generally, which it's basically White's method, there's a board involved. Shuck's method, there's the 25 prospective jurors to start. And strike and replace is the method that you normally see in actual jury selection where you fill the seat, pretty much. So know those couple of things. And yes, please at least listen to the video, the longer version of this rule that Dorothy does when I post it, which will be either by the end of tomorrow or it'll be like around Friday morning, but that video will be up soon.